Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Black. I'm your host, the Gamer. In the last episode, we took on the remaining two members of the Elite Four, Marshall and Caitlyn. And then, obviously, we found out that N beat Alder, aka the champion, and now we are kind of up here in the middle of N's castle. Um, but I guess before we can even meet N, Gets has some final words that he would like to say to us before we go and decide to take on N. So, I mean, I guess it's kind of a thing. Um, so I guess I should just mention this now, for anyone who didn't know, the sixth member of our team was confirmed the second I started playing this game. Um, so yeah, we got a couple of amazing um, cutscenes coming up here. So I mean, something that we can all look forward to. Uh, when it comes to regular DS version, or like the DS versions of Pokemon, um, Heart Gold Soul Silver as well as Black and White, um, and I think even Black and White 2 kind of took things the extra mile when it came to um, cool cutscenes. So, um, yeah. So I guess I'll shut up and let you enjoy this one really quick. So, we've seen Zekrom before, obviously, but, um, yeah, I think it's about time that we all gave a very, very, um, you know, very nice warm welcome to our sixth and final team member. Finally, Reshiram awakens, or awakens, I guess is a better, is the proper, you know, thing for that. Um, so of course it's not going to be that simple, we're not just going to be handed Reshiram, we have to obviously catch it. Um, so I did obviously kind of make a bit of a plan for this, for the worst case scenario, of course. Um, the thing is, you cannot progress through the game past this point unless you actually capture your version's legendary, which means if you're playing white, you have to catch Zekrom. If you're playing black, you have to catch Reshiram. There's no choice. Um, you do have a choice after the battle, of course, to either add it to your party or to send it to your PC if you prefer to have the Pokemon that are currently already on your team. But, of course, Cabalion's kind of just sitting here as an extra, you know, sixth wheel, and we're about to replace him. Um, the reason why I led with him is because, obviously, Reshiram has Fusion Flare, I believe is the original version that he gets at his like initial level. Um, and I figured that if the Quick Ball failed, he could be killed by that, bring in something like um, Umzakot, do the Stun Spore thing, all that other crap, then kind of find a way to whittle it down and just start chucking Ultra Balls or Dust Balls, whichever worked better. And that worked for me when I was trying to figure out like how to catch it. So that was kind of the initial plan in catching Reshiram. The thing is, again, you can't con continue through the game without catching your version of Legendary. So they make the capture rate for it rather um, high. I think it's like 45 or something like that, meaning it's really easy to catch. Um, you could probably even catch it in a Pokeball if you weaken it enough and put it to sleep or something. But um, yeah, so I go to the stats here to see what my um, you know, potential nature is. By the way, I will be getting a better nature off screen. Um, I have to go through all this crap again, of course, but yes, I will be getting a better nature. Um, 
this part of the game is probably the most difficult if you're not prepared for it. So, um, like if you're playing the game for the first time and have no idea what the hell you're doing, um, you're going to be in for a major surprise here at this point in the game. Um, but, yeah. Noticing that Reshiram had such high attack, or a little special attack, I had to assume that it either had really good IVs or it was a boosting nature for its special attack. Um, so, I mean, I just went straight for what I thought was best against it, which was super effective Dragon Breath. So, I mean, but, uh, yeah. And also carries Karakosti, he carries, or carries Archeops, he carries a very peculiar Pokemon, which you'll probably see momentarily, I think it's after this one. Um, actually, no, it's not after this one, it's the one after this, I believe. I'm not entirely sure, I can't remember the order. Um, I can't remember what else he has off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, he has both fossils on his team, as well as something else, which is kind of a surprising Pokemon that you will never see again out of this entire game, unless you happen to have uh, an event Celebi that you've just never used for some reason, and I can't remember which one it is that you're supposed to be using specifically, um, but it's one of the event Celebis that you need to have in order to do it, so... Yeah, or you can have any one of the three um, Crown Beasts, which is the three legendary dog Chinese. Oh yeah, he has a vanilla excuse me. Um, forgot about that. But um, yeah, if you have any of the Crown Beasts or one of the event Celebes, I don't remember which one it is specifically, but you need to have one of them. I don't remember which. But um, you need those in order to get any version of one of the Pokemon that he's going to be using, which is after the vanilla X now that I remember. Because he's about to bring in Clint, or Kling Clang, or yeah, Kling Clang. I can't remember which one, like which name what the final form was. Anyways, I was wondering about this, why it not only outsped, but used Focus Blast, um, and you're about to find out why. Um, high Jump Kick to the face, and super effective damage, but it's not exactly a Kling Clang, it's actually the Pokemon known as Zorak. Zorak has a special ability known as Illusion, which allows it to take the form of whatever the last Pokemon in your party is. So, his last Pokemon in his party is, of course, Kling Clang. He was obviously weak to fighting, so I decided to high jump kick it again. So, I mean, yeah. Scrafty's been such a monster through this game, hasn't he? Like, I could have gone for Mind Fu, or Mind Shao, or whatever the final stage is. But, um, I decided, nah. I'm gonna go with Scrafty. Scrafty is amazing VGC. It's also got really good stats outside of its speed, of course. I mean, but it's it's always been something that I've not only been a fan of, but at the same time, it's just been really good in the past. Like it's just always been really good. So why not, right? I'm sure that a lot of people will probably be like, well, why are you playing two fire types on your team? Well. Obviously the dragon you kind of have to have due to, you know, the storyline, of course, but, um, Chen Lore is kind of, you know, a really good, how do I put it, alternative, I suppose. Um, Reshiram is also capable of using fly, it's capable of all kinds of things, so I mean, it's going to be very useful to us regardless of whether or not we have more than one fire type on our team. Not to mention we can easily take care of, you know, anything that opposes it, so it's not a big a deal. Um, so, I'm sure that with, uh, with all my talking, you've already noticed that Getsis is back and he's talking a whole bunch of good shit. Saying how Ends just being used, how he's just, you know, stupid and all this other crap. And, um, you know... Obviously, and I'm sure that a lot of people already knew this, Ends not exactly an evil person, he had only the best in mind for everyone. He wanted Pokemon to be free, to not be, you know, put into battle so they can get injured and shit, things like that. But the thing he didn't ever, like, never really, like, considered was how they themselves felt. So, while it's true that he was trying to do something good, it, well, it didn't mean, it didn't really mean that it was particularly good for every Pokemon and trainer in the game. So, he was just misguided, and obviously the one that misguided him is this jackass. So, yeah. <clears throat> this is also why I said this is probably the most difficult part of the game, because right after you battle the Elite Four, you have to battle, and of course you get full health, but there's also the fact that you also have to catch your Legendary, and you have to battle Getsis immediately after N. So, 
if your team's not prepared for this, you're kind of screwed because Getsus's Pokemon are higher level than N's, and on top of that, like, you, if you're playing through the game for the first time, you're not going to expect this. It's going to catch you completely off guard. Your Pokemon are going to be like, well, I planned for the Elite Four and planned for basically N or whatever, but I didn't, you know, expect this. And this is one of the biggest problems about battling against this is Hydreigon, which is this generation, or I think this generation has more than one pseudo legendary, but Hydreigon in Generation 5 was one of the most amazing OU Pokemon in the game, um, boasting a really high special attack, decent speed, really good coverage, it was just absolutely amazing. Um, I took a very huge risk of staying in with Scrafty because I do, as anyone who plays competitive Gen 5 or, you know, did play competitive Gen 5, um, would know it does have access to Focus Blast for the opposing Dark types that might otherwise be a problem. Um, so I mean, like a Dark Steel type or something like that would be a problem because Dragon would be resisted by the Steel. So I mean, things like that. Um, this thing was a pain in the ass, and I should have... I remembered that it did have this, I remembered that it did have Flamethrower. Um, I was kind of hoping for a flinch here, because at least then I could do whatever. I probably could have Swords Danced and maybe done more damage, but um, instead of risking it after this, I decided to switch into the um, Chandelure, knowing that a Fire... Or, yeah, Flamethrower. Flamethrower was coming in, so I was like, yeah, I'm just going to get my Flash Fire, get a boost on my Fire moves, and Fire Blast the hell out of this thing. Um, with the fact that it already had damage, I don't know if this would have been an Oko or not, but it was more than enough to put it away from where it was, so that's all that really mattered. Um, in comes Seismitoad, which means we're obviously switching out to our Grass type, because Seismitoad is four times a week to Grass. So, I mean, that's kind of a thing. And it's... out of here. I don't understand why anyone would ever play Seismitoad. Uh, isn't Mar or Swampert like infinitely better? Like it has decent defense, if I remember correctly. It also has like really good attacks in just general. Not to mention decent stats for like whether you want to play it special or physical. Like, and of course, Bish Sharp here. I mean, I could have gone for the high jump kick, but if I had missed, then um, you know, lost all 32 of my health, and then I would have probably. Had a little bit of trouble, I guess. I, I guess Extra Drill could have finished it off, but I mean, I don't know. So, basically, that's all there really is to it. I really don't have much control over the game anymore because, you know, it's all basically talking and then, you know, end credits and all that other happy crap. I think if I hadn't, like, been slow with some of the text through the game, or through this episode, I should say, um, it would have ended before 15 minutes or around 15 minutes, but because of, you know, all the slow clicking through the text, you know. So he's kind of being told by Getsis that he's supposed to still remain as the king and all that and try to help him rule the world because he has, you know, one of the legendary Pokemon still, but, and realizes that he's not supposed to be the hero, he's not supposed to be the king, etc., because, you know, he did all these horrible things, but at the same time, Elder and um, Sharon try to convince him that he isn't as bad as everyone you know, as he might think that he is, that he had his heart in the right place, but the way he was going about it was kind of wrong. Um, I think that's a huge problem that a lot of people actually have is when they think that they're doing something right, they don't con they don't consider the fact that they might be hurting the people that they're trying to protect or that they're trying to help, and you know, just there's a lot of misunderstandings that come out of doing things like this, and uh, you kind of see that through the entire story of this game, and I mean, it kind of ends well, I guess, I suppose, and goes off to find himself, I guess, is the best way to put that, and on top of that, you know, we kind of save the day, so I mean, it's kind of a good ending, so, um, yeah, long credit sequence that's, you know, thankfully sped up things to the emulator being able to actually speed things up, um, so yeah. I also feel like I should mention this, the Justin Flynn and Jaywitz are doing a dual stream hosting for E3 or whatever, they're doing a um, Mario Kart 8 thing, I think, at the moment. So if you guys are interested in actually watching that, I do kind of recommend you go and watch it. Um, 
not really a huge fan of Mario Kart myself. I, I enjoyed the original, but I haven't really played any of the newer ones. Not to mention that I've actually heard, um, what's their, what's their names? I can't remember their name. Shona, or not Shona. I can't remember the guy's name. <laughs> um, one of the Pokemon guys, it starts with an S, I, I don't really remember. Um, he was kind of complaining about how, like, one of the power-ups that you get in, this, in you know, Mario Kart, it was used like twice and he wasn't even in first place so I guess it was some, something that targeted first place before but it was updated to hit someone close to the front or something. I don't really know how it like all works but um yeah it's kind of a thing so I mean I don't know. I think it was Shofu. Yeah it's Shofu I think. I'm not entirely sure. But um yeah. So I guess I should cover this. Uh, obviously, credits mean the end of the main game, not the post game. Um, we still haven't technically beaten the real champion. Technically, N just beat the champion to try and prove that he was right, all that other crap, and Alder was literally just trying to stop N. Um, that was technically not an actual Elite Four battle, so technically N is not the champion. Alder is still technically the champion, so we will have to battle him at some point, um, which means we will have to take on the Elite Four a second time. Um, not to mention there's a lot of areas in the post game that we can go to as well, things like that. So, um, don't think that this is the end of the game. There is a lot more that we can still do, a lot more things that we can see. There's just a lot left, so, yeah. Anyways, I guess I should end things here, considering it's about to save and say the end. Um, if you haven't already, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and until next time, this is the Poke Gamer signing out.